in tap root we have three types of roots that is primary root the secondary root and the tertiary root or we call it as the lateral root stems usually help the plants to spread out branches and it helps these branches to bear leaves flowers and fruits which are very very important for the plants to complete their life cycle stem arises from the plumule wherein the plumule will develop the shoot and that shoot will form the stem Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the session on first PUC Biology. I am Dr. Divya, Biology Faculty, Vidyashram Pre University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. So, in this session, let us learn the topic, the root and the stem, under Chapter Five, that is Morphology of Flowering Plants. So, let's learn the characteristics of root and stem. Know what are the different parts in that, and then move on to learning about some of the MCQs under this particular topic. So, talking about the plant. A plant has different parts, right? Right from the underground part to the aerial part. So it has the root, then comes the stem, leaf, and then the flower or the inflorescence. So in this chapter, that is morphology of flowering plants, it is this that we study. So, morphology means when you see a characteristic, when you see a plant, what are the characteristics that you can see or what are the parts that are visible to you. So, we can see the root, the stem, leaf and flower. So, in this session, we shall learn about the root and the stem and then learn the MCQs under it. So, talking about the root. So, root is what the underground part of the plant and it is very, very useful for the plant because it is that part of the plant that helps it to absorb nutrients and minerals as well as water from the soil. Now in roots, there are different types of roots that are there. So there are tap root, fibrous root and adventitious root. So tap root, tap root are usually found in dicotyledonous plants. For example, sunflower is a dicotyledonous plant or an another example mustard plant and in tap root, we have three types of roots that is primary root, the secondary root and the tertiary root or we call it as the lateral roots. So what is the primary root? So primary root is the one wherein a main root will be there. From that main root, all the other roots that are there that is from the mother root which is called as the primary root. So say for example, we have a plant. So the first root that arises, it will be the primary root and from the primary root, all these branchings that will come up, it will be the lateral roots which is called as the secondary root, the tertiary root and so on. So tertiary root comes from the secondary root and then so on. So this type of root is called as tap root system which is usually seen in the mustard plant. So they have the primary root that first extend or grows into the soil. From the primary root all the lateral roots that is the secondary root and the tertiary root arises and they are called the lateral roots. Best example is mustard plant. Next is fibrous root. So fibrous root are usually found in monocotyledonous plant. So one of the main characteristic feature of fibrous root is that in the fibrous root or in the monocotyledonous plant, the primary root or the main root that grows into the soil is temporary because after certain period of time, they will just vanish and that root is replaced by a large number of roots. And these roots directly originate from the base of the stem. For example, the wheat plant, all the grasses and all that, they are the example for having or the plants that have the fibrous roots. So as you can see here, a number of small tiny roots that are there, they arise from directly from the base of the stem itself, wherein the primary root is completely short-lived. Next, talking about adventitious roots. So adventitious roots can also be called as prop roots because they support the plant or other than the main root that is there for the plant, these are the roots which provide or extra roots that provide support to the plant. So these roots arise from all the other parts of the plant except the radical because we know that 
in a seed when we sow a seed what happens the seed germinates right so we sow a seed in the soil the seed germinate wherein in the embryonal axis the radical is formed radical and then the plumule so the plumule radical will always give rise to the root and the plumule will always give rise to the shoot right so here the root arises from the radical region of the seed right from the radical but in this case in the case of adventitious roots what happens other than the radical the root will not arise from the radical so it can arise from the branches from the stem in between the stem or nodal region of the stem from there and all it can arise so such roots are called as prop roots one of the best example for prop root is the banyan tree so banyan trees wherein from the branches only the rooting will happen and once it touches the ground it will just start to develop into a new plant there itself so that is nothing but the adventitious root so banyan tree then some of the grasses for example sugarcane sugarcane belongs to a grass family so that also has prop root like this this is called as a stilt root so it is one modification that is also a prop root because sugarcane they grow at one stretch very lengthy so whenever a wind comes it should not just fall off so for that these roots start arising from the node and it will root very deeply into the soil so that it can hold the sugarcane properly even though the winds are heavy so that is one of the adaptation here and monstera is also a plant which has these prop roots so this is about the adventitious roots so the three types of roots tap root fibrous root and adventitious roots next moving on to studying the regions of the root this is one of the important questions that can be asked in the exam for five marks along with the diagram so root has different regions so talking about the first region it is the root cap so root cap what is the function of the root cap so root cap actually protects the tip of the root we all know that once the radical develops or produces the root the root that is formed the tip of the root is very very fragile or it is very weak and imagine such a small fragile tip how can it go deep into the soil wherein it has to pass through the gravel through all the hard substances won't it get damaged it will right so it is because of that the tip of the root is always covered by a root cap so the main function of the root cap is to protect the region of meristematic activity now why it is present just below the region of meristematic activity so in the region of meristematic activity which is the second region of the root so after the root cap we have the region of meristematic activity so in the region of meristematic activity lot of new cells will keep on forming this is the region where actively dividing cells are there so new new cells keep on forming because the root has to grow so when it has to grow new cells has to get generated so those new cells which are very very young or formed are very very weak so to protect those cells also the root cap is very very important after the meristematic region so in the meristematic region they have very small thin walled cells which are very dense in protoplasm it is filled with protoplasm and they keep on dividing continuously that is repeatedly next is region of elongation so this meristematic cells that are formed now need to enter the next phase like how we we were fetus then we became the infants then the toddlers then we became an adult right we kept on maturing same way here also the meristematic cells which are newly formed which are very young they need to undergo elongation they will start to elongate so when the cells elongate or increase in their length their root length also will increase because the cells are elongating or increasing in their length that happens in the region of elongation so cells which are very close to the meristematic activity region they undergo rapid elongation and they also enlarge in their size and this is a region where the actual growth of the root in terms of length takes place that is in the region of elongation next is the region of maturation so these elongated cells they need to mature so 
what happens in this region in this region the cells tend to mature so the cells will gradually elongate they will after the cells elongate they will mature and they will differentiate so during that time when they are differentiating what happens some of the cells in the region of maturation will or some of the epidermal cells that are there what are epidermal cells those cells that are present covering the root so those cells few of the epidermal cells will undergo differentiation and they will develop into thread like structures which are called as the root hair and these root hairs they are extra support to the roots in terms of helping them absorb extra nutrients water properly by the plant so for that they are very very important so the different regions as we learned the root cap the region of maturation next region is region of meristematic activity region of elongation region of maturation and finally the root hair so these are the different regions so here young cells will be present in the region of meristematic activity which are actively dividing those cells will elongate wherein it will then be called the region of elongation which is responsible for the growth of the root and then those elongated cell will mature wherein few of the matured cells will undergo differentiation wherein the epidermal cells will develop into root hairs so this is the different regions of the root so moving further let's next study about the stem so stem is the aerial part of the plant so below ground part was the root next moving to the stem so stem is the ascending or aerial part of the axis which has branches leaf flowers and fruits so all the branches the leaves the flowers and the fruit develops from the stem part of the plant and it from where does the stem actually arises so i had told you earlier right so when we sow a seed in the embryonal axis the primule portion gives rise to the stem or the shoot and the radical portion gives rise to the root here the stem develops from the primule of the embryo of a germinating seed and the stem usually when they are younger or still developing they are green in color and as they mature and when they become an adult stem they become woody and dark brown in color so the different regions of the stem if you have to see here it is nodes so stem bears nodes so in between can you see these are the nodes from the nodal region the leaves arises the branches arises the flower can arise and all that where especially the leaves are born that is called as the nodal region and there is something called as the internode it is the portion between the node so say for example i draw a portion of the stem here these are the nodes and this will be the internodes the region between the nodes is called as the internode so it is in the nodal region that the leaves usually arise from the stem and not just that even the flowers also can arise and what are the functions of the stem the functions of the stem are stems usually help the plants to spread out branches and it helps these branches to bear leaves flowers and fruits which are very very important for the plants to complete their life cycle and stem helps in conducting water that is especially for transpiration process that is for whatever water is absorbed by the roots will be transported through the stem through the particular tissue which is called as the xylem so therefore it is very very important for conducting water conducting minerals for the transport of minerals for the transport of photosynthate that is whatever compounds are produced during the photosynthesis and also stem it has in the cells they help in storage of food and it gives support to the plant that is the entire branches leaves flowers fruits even the root are supported by the stem so it gives support to the plant and it also gives protection to the plant because if the stem is sturdy then the plants can stay upright or grow upright very properly so that is why it provides protection and also stem is very very important for vegetative propagation that is we can take a rose stem cut it and put it in water until it roots and then put it in the soil right it will develop into a new plant so that is how stem 
it actually is a form of vegetative propagation wherein in horticulture and all it is of great use to propagate the plants or to obtain the baby plants. So these are the different functions of the stem. So now we know the different regions of the root, what is the root, how many types of roots are there, the different regions of the root, function of the root and also we learned the stem, what are the different parts in the stem or regions in the stem wherein, wherein we learned about the node and the internode and also we learned about the function of the stem. So now let's move on to understanding about the MCQs under this particular topic. So dicotyledons or dicotyledonous plants have dash root system. Is it taproot, fibrous root, primary and tertiary? The right answer here is taproot because in the taproot there is from production of the primary root and from the primary root the lateral roots which are the tertiary roots that will secondary and tertiary roots that will develop. So therefore the right answer here is taproot. Fibrous root is found in monocots. In dicots it is tap root system. Next fibrous root system is seen in. Now I have changed the question like this. See fibrous root system in C is seen in. Earlier the question was dicotyledonous plant have dash root system. Here it is I have made it as fibrous root system is seen in. So fibrous roots are usually found in monocots. Now which is a monocot plant here we have to search for. Mustard plant that is not the right answer because mustard is a dicotyledonous plant. Banyan tree, banyan trees are also dicots and they bear prop roots or adventitious roots. Neem tree, it is also a dicot. So here wheat plant is the right answer. So wheat plant or it is a monocotyledonous plant. It is a monocot and it has fibrous root system wherein the primary root will be lost and directly from the stem lot of fine roots will start to develop which is called as fibrous root system. Next, the roots that arise from branches are called roots arising from the radical will be a root. All the other root arising from the branches will be what is it called? Is it a tap root? No, tap root directly. It is from the radical itself. Fibrous root is also from the radical. It is adventitious roots. Adventitious roots which arises from the branches of banyan trees which gives extra support to the growing banyan tree. So that is adventitious roots. Pneumatophores, pneumatophores are usually found in mangroves. So that is different. So pneumatophores is not the right answer. It is option C, adventitious roots. Root arises from dash, plumule, radical, cotyledon, endosperm. So all these are parts of the seed only. Plumule, shoot arises from the plumule. Root arises from the radical. That is option B is the right answer here. Cotyledon, cotyledon is nothing but the two parts of the seed which has the endosperm and the embryo and all that. So th that's not the right answer. Endosperm, it is the nutritive tissue that is present in the seed. It has nothing to do with the, it supports the radical and plumule but it has nothing to do with the development or the arisal of the root. So here root arises from the radical. Dash is not a function of root. Absorption of water and minerals. Now you have to be careful here. What did I ask? Not a function. I didn't ask for what is the function of a root. It is not a function of a root. Absorption of water and minerals helps in anchorage, synthesis of growth regulators, photosynthesis. Roots help in absorbing water and mineral nutrients from the soil. Roots help the plant to properly hold itself in the soil that is for anchoring itself to any substratum or to the soil and roots also help in synthesis of various plant growth regulators which are needed for the proper growth of the plant which are hormones in plants. So therefore all these three are the functions of the root. Photosynthesis is not the function of the root because roots do not have chlorophyll pigments in them therefore and also they are present below the ground wherein light doesn't go in. So therefore they have no function in photosynthesis or they don't help the plants in synthesizing food but they help the plants in absorbing food. So therefore option D is the right answer here because photosynthesis is not a function of a root. Next question. The apex of root is protected by, apex means tip, the tip of root is protected by root cap, root hair, meristematic region, elongation region. 
Now, root hair is always present usually towards the region of the stem. So, it is not at the tip of the root. So, that answer we can eliminate. Next, meristematic region, it is present above the root cap where actively dividing meristematic cells are there. Elongation region, in the elongation region actually we find the root hairs arising or it is in the elongation region that the meristematic cells tend to elongate or increase in its length. It is the root cap. So, root cap is the one that is present below the meristematic region, covering the meristematic region, which actually protects this particular meristematic region as and when it grows. So, the apex of root is protected by root cap. Next, the region of the root has actively dividing cell or dash region of the root has actively dividing cells. Is it root cap? No. Root cap has uh, the main function is just for protection. Meristematic region. Yes, meristematic region is a region which has a large number of meristematic cells which are continuously dividing or actively dividing. So, the right option here is option B. And these meristematic cells will later mature, will elongate and then they will mature. So, therefore, first actively dividing cells are found in the meristematic region. Next. Root hairs arise from root cap. No, it's not from the root cap. Region of meristem. No, because still the cells are actively dividing there. Region of elongation. No, because the cells have not yet reached maturation there. It's only the cells are increasing in their length in the region of elongation. It is the region of maturation because here the cells would have completely matured and some of the epidermal cells will differentiate and they will form the root hairs. So, it is in the region of maturation that the root hairs are produced. Option D is the right answer here. Next, dash region helps in increasing length of roots. It is elongation region because it is in the elongation region that is those meristematic cells which were present will elongate or increase in length. So, that is the region of elongation. Next, which among the following is incorrect about stem? What are we supposed to find out which is not correct about stem? It is incorrect. It is initially greenish and turns wood gradually. This is not the right answer because this is a characteristic of stem. Stem when they are younger green and later on as they become woody they become brown in color. So next stem grows vertically erect. So stem actually grows erect vertically. It's not horizontal. It grows vertically towards the sky and uh, therefore it is the above ground part. Therefore this is also not the right option. The region of stem where buds arise is called node because I told you the buds, the leaves and all that comes from the nodal region of the stem only. So, this is also not the right option. The right option here is the following statement that is incorrect about the stem is stem arises from the radical. No, stem arises from the plumule wherein the plumule will develop the shoot and that shoot will form the stem. Radical root arises from the radical. So, therefore, option D is the correct option here because stem arises from the radical is the incorrect answer for this particular or incorrect statement about the stem. Next question. The portion between two nodes is called internode, petiole, bark and bud. Petiole is actually the uh, long slender portion of the leaf that actually helps the leaf to attach to the leaf base in the stem. So, it is not petiole. Bark is the covering that is there on the stem or woody trees that is the bark. Bud is the small meristematic cells that forms which are also actively dividing which are formed in the nodal region not in the internode. So, the portion between two nodes is called the portion between two nodes. So, I have already drawn it earlier. So, this portion that is there, what is this portion called? It is called the internode. Inter means between. So, between two nodes, it will be the internode. So, option A is the right answer here, internode. Next question. In the stem, the leaves arise from. So, from where does the leaves arise? From the terminal bud? No, from the terminal bud, usually a flower bud will arise because it is at the tip of the stem. It is called terminal tip. So, that is not the right answer. Internode is not the right answer. Node is the correct answer because from the nodes, the actually the leaves arises. From the plumule, from the plumule, the shoot will arise. From the shoot, this will form a stem and from that the leaf will arise. So, plumule is not the right answer here. Therefore, the right answer here is node. From the nodal region, the leaves 
arises. So this was about the session wherein we learnt about the regions of the root, the types of roots and also the structure of the stem and all that and we learnt some of the MCQs pertaining to that particular topic. So I hope you understood this session. So we shall meet again in the coming session wherein we learn about the other parts of the plant that is about the leaf, the arrangement of leaves and all that we shall study, the venation, all that we shall study there. So see you in the next session. Thank you.